Hi everyone, so today I'm going to write a code which actually takes a screenshot. We can add additional advanced options like sending it to an email and run it automatically every let's say 60 seconds. So in order to make it work you will need s several modules. One of them is PyAuto GUI, you will have to install it. In case you don't have it on your computer, just uh, install it. So I'm, I will start by uh, importing the models and then I will define the variables and I will run with the rest of the code. I will try to explain each of these steps and let's see if it will work, okay? Well, actually I just lied to you, I know it will work. Um, so I imported just now the PyAuto GUI. We will need the date time. This is time. Okay, so these are the models that I'm going to use. In case if we want to send it uh, to an email we will need additional models. I'm not touching it right now. So I'm going to define now the variables. Let's say I want to give a specific screenshot name. Mm. The screenshot name will be screenshot. I already created the folder where I'm going to save the screenshots. In this specific video, I'm using, I'm uh, writing this code on a Windows operating system because the person who asked me to do it uh, had to execute it on the Windows operating system. Okay, so I just defined the screenshot uh, name. You can put here whatever you want image img and this is where I'm going to save these uh, screenshots so now what I'm going to add x start point I, I'm going to define the starting points for the screenshot and um, for the x and for the y okay I'm not going to take the full screenshot of the whole monitoring uh, of the whole monitor. Let's say it will be 245. Y start point will be 70. Now two additional variables which will be used for the resolution. So it actually means that from the starting point it will take uh, an image with this resolution okay so far so good additional <coughs> variable I'm going to define will be the timer this is the interval between each of the screenshots you don't have to use it this is the additional advanced option okay so now Let's make it work. So I want it to be executed as long as this uh, whole code is true. First thing that I want to do is get the current time. Uh, if you know uh, the current time uh, I just executed here, it looks like this, okay it returns back uh, the date the time and the milliseconds okay so i don't want to use this whole line i want to take from here uh, the date and the time in separated uh, variables now two parents So actually what I'm doing here, uh, just let me finish it. Uh, 
I'm taking this variable which has all these line okay I'm doing I'm, I'm, sp I'm converting it to a string I don't want it as a number or a, as any other kind of variable and I'm splitting it with the space okay so right now I will have in now two params means now two parameters I will have a uh, first item will be the date second item will be the time with the milliseconds okay now I want to get the date from here the date is index 0 inside now two params okay of course the time will be the index number 1 you can do by the way you can do all these actions in one line I just want to do it step by step so you will understand completely what I'm doing I'm taking the time and I'm doing a split with the the dot y because I want to take only this part I don't want the millisecond okay so right now what it means is that in row time I'm going to have index 0 which will, is going to contain the time and index 1 going to contain the milliseconds time row going to explain now about the last variable time clean okay so I just want to cut from the time okay I want to replace all these semis with just nothing okay so I will get by the end let's say I'm doing this on the, I'm running this part of code on this line it will be 1924 48 without the semis okay why I'm doing it because by the end what I want to do is create a screenshot which will be with the syntax let's say underline and the timestamp which will be build off the date and the time the clean time by the end you will uh, see the whole puzzle and it will be easier to understand so I like to use the try and the accept. I also want to uh, create a, a nice output, so I will see which steps, uh, which step is being executed. Taking a screenshot. Okay. Screenshot name. Now this is where I'm going to use the pi auto GUI. I'm not going to explain about all the functions that pi auto GUI have. You can always go to Python library, write the name of the model and you will get all the available functions. Okay, actually I'm creating now the syntax of the whole uh, file name file name
I want to save it as PNG. And this is where I define the parameters. missing here screenshot okay of course accept and we're going to print just the exception if there will be okay What do we have to write? Okay, let's print here that we actually took the screenshot. Screenshot taken. I think if I want to output the parameters of the image, let's try to do it. conflict okay good something is missing here Okay, this is where um, I want to save the file. And you don't have to do it, but I want to sort the files. Mm, this is why I imported the globe. Uh, I'm not going to explain this video why I'm using a globe dot i globe uh, function. Only specific part about this uh, line is that I want to find the exact uh, path name. I want to uh, sort it, and that's it. If you want to read more, you can search for this uh, function in a Py library. Python library. So I want to sort it. And what do I want to sort? It will be if let's make it files path. Okay. Okay, so I'm sorting the files by the last updated, okay? I, I want to have on the top of the list the last created file and I'm taking it as an index 0. 
I'm saving it in a variable last screenshot okay and I want to make sure it was really created latest screenshot is last screenshot okay okay let's try to execute it mm, I think there will be a mistake let's try to run it okay there is an error and uh, model time has no attributes role of course this is nice because we are going also to debug um, Line 35 files, iGlobe got an expert keyword key. Where, where did we use iGlobe? In. Okay, key. iGlobe. I think this one was extra. No, we do need it. Oh, I see. Sorted globe, I globe files path. Hmm. I have to close it here. Now this this should work now. Okay. Excellent. What just happened? Okay. It continuously taking screenshot. Okay. It gives us the parameters image mode RGB the size this is the X area and uh, the Y area okay um, now since we wanted to make it continuously uh, taking screenshot code if I want to put here another two lines it will keep doing uh, the screenshot as long as I won't interrupt the script okay so in a moment we're going to edit let's just see if the screenshots were created excellent and this is how we're creating it screenshot time as you can see without the semis png the date if you want you can put here between the name and the date another uh, underscore oops where is my code All right so let's add the extra two lines print going to wait timer yes enables timer Okay, let me explain at this point I'm going to print that I'm going to wait timer seconds or uh, until the next cycle means until the next time I will take a screenshot let's make it shorter five seconds I don't want to wait for a minute and I'm going to use the time slip function which is actually going to wait 10 se uh, uh, excuse me five seconds until it will uh, start to run everything inside this loop so let's test it okay five seconds and here we go another cycle a new screenshot every five seconds as you can see okay now another part of this uh, advanced option that you can add I don't want to stack uh, on this part too much because this is a completely extra new video if you will need help with this part I'm going to explain you um, but for now I'm going I'm not going even to test it because I know it works 
and this part requires extra um, setup on the Gmail side. So I'm just going to add the required part in case if you want to send it via email you need these models okay board mine and that part Now from multi-part I'm going to import my multi-part. Oops, sorry, it's supposed to be my, my text, my multi-part. Okay, these are the models that you will need, all right? Now this part is going to be very long. Um, first thing you are going to create is another variable which uh, we are going to use as a user which is which will send the email since it will be only just for the code it will be test gmail.com you will need to define the password email password xxx okay Sender details. This is will be the destination. Blah blah. Oh, never mind. This this the. Probably this email exists, but the password is incorrect, okay? And this is where we going to find the email body. Sorry for my keyboard, I have a gaming keyboard, so it's very noisy. Body. This is an automatic email sending email from my PC. Okay, this is the. This, I think it will be the subject. No, it will be part of the body. So I define it as a plain text, the body. File name that I'm going to send via email it will be the last screenshot. Attachment. I need to open this file and save it in variable. File name. Okay. 
this is the, ba uh, the base that I'm going to use part set mm. payload attachment I want to read the attachment okay wait did I miss something no I think it's fine now this is the part of the encoding and coders encode Wait, base, we need a base 64. What do we want to encode? All the part of the email. Part add. Part add. We need to add a header to the email attachment. Email content. And the attachment to the header. the file name okay we do message attachment the text will be message as string Now we have to define the uh, Gmail server properties. Um, so I don't remember the properties, so I'm going to copy them. SMTP ALE. And of course, the port. Oops. Log into the server with your credentials. course I'm going to just try sending email Email sent success. Oh, this is just a nice message at the end. We want to disconnect from the server. That's it. And since we wanted the code to be repeatable, just have to cut this part and put it here. Okay, so 
from here till here it's the server uh, it's the email settings I took the details from uh, Python library of course I don't remember all these details I'm not using it uh, daily the only thing I can tell you is uh, that if I'm going to send it out it will fail okay and um, message is not defined see it's not the error that we're supposed to get message oh of course emails and I forgot the whole part here sub okay yeah we need a subject and um, screenshot and uh, this is the email subject okay and we didn't define the message itself now message for Will be the email user. Two, it will be the email send. And subject will be the subject. Now we have the body. Okay. SMTP mm, lib. Why? This is nice to write such code because you can debug it. So you might learn from it. Oh, of course. SMTP lib. SMTP, where is my SMTP? It's supposed to be here. I searched SMTP. I think I didn't even didn't define it. No. MTP, right. It's supposed to fail in the authentication. Wow. Server start TLS. Nice. You should learn from these uh, stupid errors. When you type in quickly, it's, this is what happens. Okay, now this error is fine okay it's definitely the correct error that was called by the try and accept okay because there is no I, I assume there is such email but definitely the password is not correct so this is how you can send a, a screenshot of course you don't want it if you don't want uh, the email part we just take it from here you can cut it out click and you will get a fresh screenshot let's see if it was created from now yep it's matching the time okay so i'm going to attach few links i will attach the globe uh, link because this is what i use and I'm going to attach what was the second one. Uh, I think it was where is it? the pay auto GUI. Okay, just in case if you need it. And uh, that's it. I hope you liked the video. I hoped. I hope it uh, will help you with the 
uh, screenshot taking with Python. Uh, subscribe the channel if you liked it, like the video. See you later.